This is Matt Dollar, and I'm here with some coverage from the 2017 Swanee Open uh, down in Live Oak, Florida. This is played on the course called Magnolia, and she is a beast. So we had Carla Seward filming for us this weekend, and we will start round number one on hole number four, which is a monster par four. You kind of have to go straight off the tee, turn to the right, then turn back to the left. Or you could just throw an overhand right through all the stuff, because uh, that's kind of what happened there. Missed my line a little bit and still managed to get through. Went with the hatchet off the tee, and then I also went with the hatchet there trying to throw that late landing uh, forehand roller. Wasn't very successful. It did get me down the fairway, but didn't quite put it on the right angle to get to the basket. So I was stuck with a little bit of a weird upshot there, so what I did is actually Anheuser putted with a felon and let it flex out up to the basket. So I got out of there with a par, which is always good, and we move on to hole five. Hole five is a really tough backhand shot. Uh, I usually just play that thumber to try and give myself a long putt. There's one tree that kind of blocks the full flight thumber, so I have to throw more of a sidearm thumber or a quick flipper and so it just never gets the distance to get there. So a couple pars in a row. By the way, we are playing all the A positions today, so when you look at those T signs, you know that we're playing the A pins. Uh, the A pins and the B pins aren't a huge difference, but it's definitely a little harder in almost all the B pins. So after hitting one of the trees off the T there, I ended up having to take the backdoor route um, just right between the two holes right here and threw it right into another tree so it's a tough hole if you get off the fairway that was a triple X I went with there that pink disc it was a thumber but I threw it on a sidearm line and now I've got this tough little putt and this little bent tree is my nemesis let me just go ahead and tell you that yes sir so in the practice round the day before the tournament I put it into that tree also so very consistent. Hole number seven, one of the shortest holes in the course, maybe the shortest hole, and it's just an absolute tunnel shot, and I did not execute. I was going with the judge there off the tee. And now I've got the soft Cenus in my hands, going with a little forehand up shot. I absolutely love that soft Cenus for short forehand putts and forehand up shots. So hole eight, par four, turns hard left about 280 feet off the tee. I'm going with the felon here. That's a little bit flippy uh, for a felon. So I like to throw it with a little bit of hyzer and have it stand up. The second shot here, I'm going with a fluid enforcer. And it is beefy. I felt very fortunate to have a look for the birdie on this one very rarely get this birdie. And that's the soft caltrop I'm putting with there. Right now I'm kind of doing a putter by committee, uh, which means I'm using two different putters. So I'm using the soft caltrop for a lot of my normal putts and anything with the wind. And then I'm using the judge, a uh, really beat up judge that I have, um, for any kind of really sh necessary straight shots, maybe straddle putts and stuff like that. So I hit a tree pretty early off the tee on hole number nine. It's a weird right hand turn, but there are really no trees in the fairway, which is pretty rare for this course. Um, but I still managed to throw it off the fairway and find a tree. I'll get out of there with a, oh man, I think that was a bogey, which not very good after coming off that birdie on eight, but hopefully I can bounce back here on hole number 10. I went thumber with a triple X. It's a gold line triple X. It's not crazy overstable. I've been using it for some backhands and some quicker flipping thumbers. So that was the soft uh, caltrop there. And I just love the stability on it. If my touch is good and I'm able to put that little bit of ante like I used to do with all my putts, the soft caltrop just releases right into the chains. And that birdie is going to continue this roller coaster after that birdie bogey birdie and that is just a, not a good shot um, I 
if you're gonna throw a thumber off this hole, off the tee on this hole, then you're really just playing for the main gap. And I tried to get too cute and take it too tight and hit the uh, tree defining the right turn, which puts me in a rough spot. And I throw into another tree trying to cut through the woods and I'll end up just having to pitch up and save my bogey there. So the birdie bogey streak continues and we move on to hole number 12. Tight, tight par four, but not that long. First time you ever filmed that, dude? Yeah, version play. <laughs> so that was a gold line ballista I threw there. Um, I couldn't find the one that's normally in my bag. I, I interchange a lot of discs in my bag depending on where I'm playing. And so I put a fresh one in, and that was the uh, the first throw with that disc. It's really nice to know it's going to fly like that right out of the box. So I'm ending up with a short shot here for my eagle attempt. And uh, just chip it up there with the judge, and I'll get my birdie. And continue that roller coaster some more. So hole 13, oh, you really got to throw it straight down that tunnel, Wowzers. and that is one of the worst group blocks I've thrown in quite a while. So a lot of this course though is um, missing your line and then trying to scramble back to the hole, and that's why you need shots like this. I really focused on throwing that straight up and down and not forward but up so that it had a lot of spin and not a lot of speed so it takes an extra long pan and then I think it takes a little nick there at the end it's tough to tell in the slow-mo it looks like it just skips straight but it might have nicked off a tree regardless that is a tourniquet shot because it stopped the bleeding on what could have been an easy bogey so after that par we move on to hole 14 this one's really tight. This one doesn't really have too much of a line. Um, I see the four-handers kind of throw what I would suspect is the real line, but it's not much of a thing for a backhander on this one. This is one of those holes where I feel like if they had just cleaned some trees out, it would be a great hole. Instead, it's just kind of a junky filler. But hole 15 is a hole that I do like in both pins. You have dual fairways. And there's the basket down there. It's a hundred feet difference in between the short and long pin. I went with the triple X off the tee and the judge for that slightly salty putt. We're gonna get a little replay on that and uh, zoom in just a bit so we can see that little bit of lettuce going right through. I'm not sure if that would have went in without it or not. It looked good out of my hand but that lettuce kept it from turning any further right. Consider myself fortunate and move on to hole 16, the super tight tunnel. Not a long one, but man, it's hard to hit that gap. I actually went with the hatchet so I could throw it about, I don't know, 30 or 40 percent, just super lightly, and it worked out pretty good. The fact that that hatchet actually hyzered out just means that I had to throw it super light because it's the flippiest disc I've ever owned at this point. It's been in my bag for over a year. So hole 17 is a par 4, left turn, uphill at the end, some trees in the fairway on your drive and your second shot. I'm not sure if this hole would be that much better if they cleaned up some of these trees because then it would, I mean you'd see a lot more birdies because if you throw a good tee shot you should have a pretty easy chance at birdie. I'd like to see some of these smaller trees go and Maybe they push the pins back a little bit, maybe turn the A pin into the B pin, and then the B pin be something that's further back, because you have a little room there behind it and to the right. But that's just me. I'd rather add a little bit of distance than take out some trees that shouldn't be in the middle of the fairway. Hole 18's got a mighty clean fairway off the tee, but I chose to throw it into a tree off of the fairway. Now I'm going to have to scramble. That's a sidearm with the enforcer. And I got myself a little too far, missed the fairway. Now I'm going to have to go back door just to try and get a par here. So I take it over those woods that separate holes 17 and 18 and somehow find the line I was looking for Got and get it up there nice. for a tap in par after jail off the tee and jail in the second shot. So hole one, don't be shocked, but we have another super tight hole here. You gotta go dead straight and then turn right after you get past all those trees. When you
you see someone park this hole with a legitimate shot, it is, it's a beautiful one, I tell you that. In the background there, you can see those new little cabins they've built that are right by the disc golf course. Great place to stay. Especially if you're coming to town to play some disc golf or catch a music festival. Hole number two, pretty cool par four. And you want to throw a hyzer off the tee or you want to go up the straight left route. I went with the hyzer and I just left it a bit wide. That second shot, wow, it hung up in the air a while. But got denied by some trees. And that third shot was something special. And that putt was also something special. So that was a very interesting hole. Just going to move on from that. And this will be our last hole. Hole number three. I was definitely planning to throw straight up the middle on this hole. Then the two guys in front of me, uh, Evan Gerthy was first. They threw sidearms down that right-hand side on an Anheuser. And I said, hey, that looks pretty, pretty easy compared to hitting this tiny gap. So I went for it. So that got me in second place after the first round, and uh, check back for some more videos. We'll have the FPO League card with Elaine King and Hannah Leatherman coming up. Thanks to Carlos Seward for filming and Latitude for all their support. Thanks for watching, guys.